Craig Collison, and I am the Professor of Percussion at Arkansas State University. And I'm here today to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is percussion. Family of percussion is huge. There are many instruments included in the family. Such instruments as timpani, snare drum, vibraphone, glockenspiel, congas, bongos, just, just a lot of instruments in the family. What are pitched and unpitched instruments? Well, the family is divided into two parts. That's the pitched instruments. Those instruments are constructed so they produce perfect pitches. And those that aren't pitched, that's not their purpose. Those kind of instruments we can scrape like a weirdo. We can shake like maracas. Or stir. Or we can strike like a tambourine. So there's a, variety, a large variety of unpitched percussion. Today we're going to focus mostly on snare drum. And first I'd like to talk about drums in general. So drums have existed for about 8,000 years on the planet. And they've been spread out among all the people in the, in the world. They have had drums in Africa, in Europe, in Mesopotamia, which is Syria and Iraq now. In the United States, we had American Indians with drums. And so a drum is pretty much constructed of a shell with a head over it. And the earliest drums were probably most likely hollowed out logs. And the skin that went over that was some kind of animal skin. Usually today, um, if we have skin at all on drums, which is kind of unusual today, but at that time it was, would have been uh, calf or goat, something like that. Okay. In the early 1960s, the head started becoming made of plastic, and they're a little harder to break. The first ancestor of the modern snare drum, and it's called a snare drum because there's a snare on the bottom, against the bottom head. The snares can be made of wire or gut, various things, but the first ancestor was a tabor. The tabor was a small drum and it had a snare on it, and the person put it over his right shoulder, and he played it with one stick. And that would have been around the 1300s when this all happened. And he also could play a fife with the other hand. About 1600, the Swiss army, they decided to make the drum a whole lot bigger, and they used two sticks. And so they used this instrument so they could signal to the troops when they were in battle, they could hear the drums, the really loud, bigger drums that were tuned with rope. The rope was tensioned down. But if they wanted to signal the charge, then they'd do a certain drum beat. Or a retreat, they'd do a certain drum beat. First, I talked about the fact that some of the, probably the oldest drums were either made of clay or wood or that type of thing. This has a metal shell. It has a snare we talked about on the bottom. And on that bottom head, it's pretty thin, and that lets, makes it easier for that snare to buzz against that bottom head. The top head's a little bit thicker, and we have these little tension screws around the drum. And when you tighten those, it changes the tone. It makes the tone go up. And that is one way of tuning the drum. Okay, so I'm gonna dem demonstrate some different sounds. We talked about, at first, just playing the snare, and we're going to just do some single strokes. And when we play it that way, it's the, snares, the snare sound is really pretty short and crisp. But if I want to make the sound longer, I'm going to do what's called a roll. And there's two common rolls that are used most of the time. At first, this one's called a buzz roll. So what I'm going to do to perform a buzz roll I'm going to take each stick and set it down on the drum and let it buzz as long as I can. And then I'm going to get the buzzes faster and try and connect them. 
So they sound like I'm just ripping a sheet, a bed sheet. So how many times have you gone to the baseball game or some other place where they had to play the national anthem and they had a band play, right? So before the band comes in, the drummer plays a long buzz roll. And then the band comes in. So you've probably heard that many times. Another type of roll that is very common is a double stroke roll. And when I was a little kid learning to play drums, the, my teacher called it a mama dada roll because that's the way it sounds when you play. Because you get mama dada, you get two sounds on each hand as you play. And so we start that slow and it'll turn into bounces after a while. So I go. So I'm going to play something that would be very common, like a little, little short cadence using open rolls. interesting um, rudiments that drummers have to play. And the rudiments sound just like their, their name a lot of times. The first one we're going to talk about is a flam. And what a flam is, is two notes that are almost played together, but not quite. And it makes a big fat note rather than a single note. A single note like this, as to, opposed to a bigger, fatter note. And you can hear that sentence sounds like flam, doesn't it? Okay, the next one is cool because it makes us, it's pretty close to its name. If I say rough, what do you think of? Well, we're going to buzz that grace note and we'll, it'll make a rough sound. And people, last second note, single. It sounds like rough, doesn't it? I can also make this a double stroke note. And there's a rough too. This instrument, this rudiment you probably heard before, and that's called a paradiddle. And this is a really common rudiment, but it's a fun rudiment. So it says its name, just if I go right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, you can hear paradiddle. Paradiddle, paradiddle. Okay. <laughs> There's three rudiments, and the rudiments are kind of like our scales on the piano. So if you were learning to play piano, you probably have to sit and learn your, all your scales. And that's the basis of the building blocks of what you play. And that's the same thing for drums. That's the same thing we have to know all our rudiments. We can do a rim shot, and these are loud. And I'm going to put the tip of this the stick right on the drum head and play the rim at the same time. Pretty loud. Sounds like a gunshot almost, doesn't it? This is a little higher pitch cross stick rim shot. This real common. Okay, and this is one of my favorites. This is called a rim knock, like you're knocking at a door. And when I put my stick like this and I play on the edge, it kind of sounds like two sticks sitting at the same time, like a clave. That's pretty cool for playing kind of Latin kind of beat. The last thing I'd like to talk about is brushes. Okay, and these evolved around 1900 or so with a lot of jazz musicians. These evolved from steel fly swatters, okay? And today they're made out of steel bristles and they make different sounds. They can make long sounds and short sounds, just like sticks, but they're a little bit mellower. And the drummers liked those back at that time because then they could play softer under, under other instruments. And that was a good thing so they wouldn't get in trouble with the, the brass players. So you can play single strokes with these just like you can with a, the syndrome sticks, but it's not quite as abrasive. 
sounds a little like a train, doesn't it? Or we can sweep the brushes across the top of the head and make it sound like an ocean. So I'm gonna just sweep it this way. Now, if I want to make a little accent, I'm going to speed the brush up at a certain point. And now we've got a pulse going, so the band can follow me with my beat. Now I'm going to put two brushes on it. percussion family in the orchestra. With the orchestra we have the timpani player and usually he's playing four big kettle sized drums. Okay they're, they're pretty large and he can play single strokes on those or he can roll and be real dramatic boom, and bring that up and support the orchestra and make things exciting. Uh, the snare drummer as, as you've heard he can play parts that maybe to a piece that sounds a little bit militaristic or just to, to uh, even play some things from Broadway musicals. I've done that with uh, the Delta Symphony playing on the drum set when snare is a big part of that. Um, some instruments that play, they have a keyboard family which goes along to do support other instruments with the colors like the, the colors of the bells which is a little bit more metallic sound. Uh, the sound of a xylophone which has wooden bars, and the wooden bars are uh, struck with a hammer, just like, like this hammer. It can be used for both. And that's kind of a biting sound most of the time. It really cuts through a uh, vibraphone sometimes, and that vibraphone is made of a, has a keyboard, just like a marimba or a xylophone or the bells, but it has aluminum bars and what's different about it and the other instruments in the percussion section that are keyboard instruments is it has a pedal just like it on, a, on a, a piano so when you want to make a note sing out and be long you push the pedal down so you don't have to, to roll on it. You can roll on it but that's not so common. Some other really cool instruments like the tambourine when we're talking here. The tambourine can be used to do a lot of different effects and you know, I'll follow play real softly. And triangles, if you hear somebody play a triangle, it can be this a, a really beautiful sound when it's blended with a, uh, a string player playing a violin or flute, that kind of thing. Cymbals really create a lot of excitement when you're playing crashes behind, you, very, you need the national anthem, a lot of other things. And then there's suspended cymbals, where it's just one cymbal and you're just playing that with two marimba mallets. And that gets a long shh sound, build like, sounds like an ocean building up. Some really great sounds. The bass drum, okay. The bass drum has that really nice dark, it's like a subwoofer of the orchestra. It's, it's this huge, big, fat sounder and it can give you that bass sound. It can be a rhythmic keeper, rhythm keeper for pulse, or it can give you those really nice points of excitement where you get that huge burst with the cymbals and bass drum together. So you should really go out and check out your, your orchestra percussion because we are the part of the orchestra that are always moving around. And it's not because we're always in trouble, it's just, it's, it, we are interesting to watch. Uh, and most of the other players are interesting to watch too, but sometimes we get a little bit more attention just because we're walking around back there and picking up things and putting things down. And that's what makes percussion fun because there's a million things to do, play, a million instruments, and you, you never get bored. Thank you very much for watching today. It was a pleasure to play for you, and go support your percussion section. I hope you enjoyed this video about the instruments of the orchestra. If you like this one, please check out our other videos and give us a like and subscribe to our channel.